my video yesterday where I was talking about beginnings and, you know, the fun of, of starting a project, that got me thinking more about um, the, the, the notion of how people start their stories. And this, this ended up spiraling um, where I, I was figured I'd do a video today on the two most common types of um, ways to write stories. And so this, this first video here today will be one on um, the style of pantsing. And then I'll do one um, here in another day or so on uh, plotting and my, my thoughts on that. So pantsing was often how I would write my stories when I first started out. Uh, I, I never really used any sort of like plots or sketches or anything like that. For the most part, it was just me sitting at the table, uh, you know, sitting at the desk. And I was just typing away. That, that, that's basically how I, I wrote a lot of my early work. And it's definitely the most efficient method. So as far as, far as like thoughts on the, the sort of the pros of it, that's, that's really it, right? You, you're, just, you're, you're sitting down with all of the energy and momentum that you possibly have with, un, with no restrictions. You can, in essence, sit down and just write and, and be done. Uh, it's sort of like the parameters I gave for this write every day where um, regardless of what I write, as long as I actually do end up writing, uh, it's a win for me. That's kind of the same philosophy of pantsing, just sitting down at the computer and actually writing regardless of, um, you know, what the story might, might, might turn out to be. Now, obviously, when you are pantsing, you're writing basically with the goal of getting the story done, the idea of having a, a complete story at the end of this. And that's where a lot of the issues tend to befall those who decide to go the route of, of pantsing. So, as you know, as easy as it is to start with with a pantsing style of writing, there, the much like I said yesterday, where the beginning is much easier, it's it's, it's a very sort of liberating thing. The work comes in with your stories as the as the tale goes on. It, the, the The work comes in for the most part when you get you know ten twenty percent into the story. That's that's where the, the real work goes in. And if you're pantsing and not going with an outline and you're just sort of trying to wing it a, as you go, what happens is that exhilaration that is going to wear off, that 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 fun element is going to wear off and you're going to get to like, you, you know, a certain page. You're going to get like, you know, 50 pages in and you're going to wonder where the heck am I going? Where, where the heck is this story going? Or you're going to wonder, you know, you're going to get, you know, halfway through the book and, and wonder, all right, this first half kind of meanders a bit and how am I going to do a payoff now? Or you're going to get to the very end of the story and man, you, you, you know, you're going to realize your, your third act has, has so many problems because you didn't set things up basically well in the first act. So going in without any kind of planning or direction, it's, it's going to harm you a lot more than help you long term, I think. So um, I, I don't anymore go with that sort of style. Um, and d d just because cause I, I, I've sort of written enough, basically, that I know that if I go with a pantsing mentality, I'm going to have a lot of problems. And I'm going to end up, for the most part, needing to rewrite my entire story. It, it, it's going to almost – the, the idea of pantsing, and I think there are some writers that do this – Pantsing is, is treated almost like a really strong outline in a sense that pe people write it basically with the idea that they're going to rewrite and throw out entire chapters and scenes and all this work is going to go basically to waste. And the idea is that the first draft that they write is more just a general outline that that way they can go through on their second and, and, and third drafts. And those end up becoming like their first real first and second drafts. And uh, to their credit, if you if people that do that route – I imagine your second draft might be stronger than a plotter's first draft. Uh, may not be, may not be, but, but, but I imagine if you're going to construct that well of an outline using your first draft, you probably will have a stronger second draft than someone's first draft, but, but, but you're still always playing around basically behind everyone else. So for me, it's, it's, it's a lot of unnecessary work in a sense. But the other problem is that 
when it comes to pantsing, people tend to think that writing without outlines unleashes their creativity. They, 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 they can be as, un, you know, there's, there's the idea that with, with no personal restrictions at all, the, the, most great, the greatest creative work can come out of you. Um, unfortunately, it, it, creativity doesn't need that. Your, your creativity doesn't need some sort of unbridled, um, you know, direction. Your creativity, it needs, well, actually, yeah, <laughs> it, it needs a bridle. Like, like, like a horse's bridle. Uh, it, it needs something to control it. It, it needs, you, you know, like, it, 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 honestly, it needs a whip in a sense, right? You, you, need, you need to give it some sort of direction. When you write without, without any sort of, like, context to, to your creative work, it becomes a mess. It, it, it's, 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 it's like listening to some really, like, like avant-garde music that, you can just tell or looking at, you know, painting that that is just the most ridiculous sort of thing. And, and you can tell that it's not very good, even though it, it creatively it was done with this great creative freedom without that that restriction, without that that sense of context to apply to it. You're it's it's not good. It's it's not going to be good. So I, I would focus if, if your argument for pantsing is more on the, you know, the, the no restrictions to your freedom uh, of creativity mentality, restriction can be helpful. It, it, it's often how well people bend the rules that they that their works become celebrated, not the ones that don't adhere to any rules at all. So that is just a quick video, just, I, I guess, going over more of my thoughts on panting, and I guess some of the, some of the cautionary sides um, of it, if you are looking to apply that. Now, again, I, I don't imagine any videos ever going to really persuade someone one way or the other. If you're having success with one, you know, with pantsing or plotting, if you're having success, that's great. Um, you're, you're probably going to stick with it. But um, to those that maybe might find themselves, m much like I did, um, with, you know, you're, you're pantsing this novel and like the first, you know, third of the book feels great and then you start getting stuck and, and you wonder why you, you always get stuck and why your work, you know, always gets, why you always experience these roadblocks and, and you think, oh, only the greats can somehow, you know, pull off these stories really well. Well, I, I would suggest that it may, it may not be your skill at all. Your poor writing might just be that you don't have enough direction going into your project first. So yeah, um, just a video going over that. Like I said, I'll do one on plotting tomorrow. Uh, but in the meantime, um, I, I do hope this helps out a bit here. And if you are the person that's struggling, I, I hope it um, might offer you a little bit of, it, it might provoke some thoughts in you to perhaps change your process.